to Joe's astrology. This is the birth chart for Jojo Siwa. I believe she is a pop singer and dancer. And this is a very interesting chart. And I usually I usually know a little bit about the people I'm speaking about. With, with this one, I'm gonna I'm just gonna do it without knowing really much about her at all. <clears throat> And I also don't usually speak, uh, kind of give you a hint of what I'm going to get at here. I usually, I, I'm going to try not to speak negatively and don't take this the wrong way. If you watch my other uh, chart readings, I usually am fairly positive. But with this one, it is just, it's, well, let's get into it. So she's got Mars rising. Sorry, she's got Aries rising, ruled by Mars. It's in the 11th house, conjunct Neptune and Aquarius. With the 11th house, uh, with Mars and Neptune there in the 11th house and Aquarius. I'm not going to speak on that just yet. With this Aries rising, second house, ruled by Taurus. Venus is a ruler in the first house, and it's in Taurus. She's got Mercury in Taurus. Sun in Taurus, North Node in Taurus. This is what I want to focus on here, the stellium in Taurus. And with the ruler coming back to the house of self, the first house, and and uh, the Aries rising. This is a, when you look at this chart, this is an extremely selfish person. She, and when it comes to like the world we live in today, she's all about money. I would, I would guess this person would do far more than the average person would do to get money. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's, uh, well, let's just I'll continue on here. She got Saturn on the third house, Gemini on the third house cusp, the ruler Mercury in the second house. So her mind, with Gemini there, she's got a very left brain, very much in the left brain. Even though with, uh, you think with music, right brain, and, uh, um, performance and things like that. Now with this one, she's got Saturn there. She's thinking about work. With Mercury, the ruler, comes back to Taurus in the second house. She's thinking about how can I improve myself in order to get money. Mercury there in the second, the Virgo decan, the second decan. How can I improve in order to get money? In order to improve my financial standing, my my resources. With that sun there in the north node, it's also in the Capricorn Deccan. North node again ruled by Venus. She's going to use herself to do this, self-promotion. And with that sun there in the north node, she's really moving hard in this direction in the second house. Again, Sat Saturn in the third house. It's not retrograde. In fact, this chart has no retrograde. Oh, wait, well, she's got Mercury retrograde. So we can say she's redoing this. You know, if she was going to have, oh, she has Pluto retrograde too. Uh, if she was going to have a retrograde and it's in Taurus, the Taurus Scorpio axis, it's really emphasizing this redoing of making money, getting money, and. Jupiter is here in the fifth. So you have these like double, these double signatures. Like when I look at charts, I don't, I like Leo. Leo is one of my favorite signs. Um, but I don't prefer to see Jupiter in Leo. Like my preference is Sun in Leo, maybe second best Moon in Leo, but definitely I prefer Sun in Leo in the people that I meet. But here we have Jupiter in Leo and it's in the fifth as well, the Leo, the Leo house. So it really it expands that me, self, um, I'm the queen, etc. And of course it can be creativity and maybe she's spent most of her time um, making music for children. We see here Pluto in the ninth. So she's definitely a learner, a traveler, a seeker at a soul level. But what is she really, what is she really seeking? 
with this chart, with this life. You see here Moon and Capricorn, it's in the Taurus Deccan. It's more emphasis on that Taurus money. And it's near the Midheaven. And again, I, I'm a Capricorn Sun, uh, but I don't have any 10th house. And I have my preference in people that I say, maybe it's because I'm a Capricorn, is Capricorn Sun. Uh, and preferably not nothing in the 10th house or maybe minimal planets in the 10th house. But definitely I notice with Moon, when we're talking about Capricorn and the traits that go along with climbing the ladder and, and being concerned with status and tradition, very Saturnian person, the Moon, the Moon represents that from what I've seen way more than any other planet in Capricorn, maybe Jupiter as well, but much more than the Sun. A lot of people, they see if you see a Sun Capricorn, you think that they're all about status and climbing the ladder. The Moon far much more than the Sun. And we see here with this Uranus, she's got Uranus in Pisces and the Twelve. So any any really sign of Pisces uh, showing a really being in touch with the public spirituality is really, you know, there's nothing in the 12th, there's nothing in Pisces, and what we have, we have the plan of aloofness. And individuality in the 12th, again, in the 12th and in Pisces. So I would interpret that as being very aloof when it comes to spirituality, not concerned with uh, the higher self at all. Now she, and, and, to, and to further that, we have uh, the planet Mars, which is you know, something that cuts and um, damages, and it's next to, it's making a conjunction to that Neptune. So it's not that there's not that drive to, to um, and that concern for Neptune, but with her, it's about making her dreams come true. You can see it's ruled by Uranus as well, so it comes back to that Uranus in, in the 12th. Um, you know, her creativity, you could say her creativity and her musical ability, it's really, it's really about that Mars, it's about that self, uh, self-promotion, and you can see it's opposite that Jupiter in Leo. We see Jupiter, we often see that Jupiter-Neptune uh, aspect, and it's in a, it's in an opposition um, so we kind of really see that idea of that Mars, Neptune, that spirituality being split from Jupiter. Jupiter being the um, the planet of the higher self, religion, higher learning, etc. And we can, and even with that Mars there in that opposition, it's it's just really showing ambition, more concerned with ambition. She's got Mars making an exact, that Mars Neptune's making an exact sextile to that ascendant, which is also, again, an Aries ascendant. So, really having an opportunity to meet the right people, maybe as well. You know, this person, you can see that that's ruling the chart. Mars and Neptune is ruling the chart in the 11th of um, community, friends hopes and wishes, goals and aspirations, and you can see with it ruling the chart, she really would have had to meet the right people at a young age to make this happen. South Node in Scorpio, ruled by Pluto. Well, south Node, again, the South Node in Scorpio in the 8th, so again, double Scorpio. Uh, what does that mean? It's just coming from a place of Learning about how to um, how to make money, how to get other people's money, how to create a legacy, how to use psychology and um, the deeper aspects of psychology in order to create resources. Second house. Not really getting into many of the aspects here. There's just so much. It's just when you look at this whole chart in its totality and. Um, just first glance, it really jumps out, uh, this idea of being so focused on the career and the money and the resources and the work.
I want to kind of look at Pluto. Here we have a Pluto. Oh, before I do that, I wanted to see. This Uranus is also squaring the nodes there in Pisces. And it's really showing that there's this, you know, this this strong movement towards this Taurus, but there's a resolution resolution node here is the eighth and the and the second. And I mean, I would interpret that as she's, um, you know, how big she how big can she get? She's got to keep going back to that eighth house and uh, doing research and reformulating herself in order to just really expand that second house. And she's using herself. You're honest here as a um, being the, uh, the the individual and a person who's strongly individuating to do this. You know, she's very wants to be unique, wants to use that a uniqueness to do all this. I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, if anyone can relate to this, and um, please feel free to leave comments. Like I said, I don't know much about this person. It's just one of the one of the most uh, I don't even know what the word is, but just everything I said is just one of the best charts for that kind of personality and that kind of life. So again, yeah, please like like the video if you like this content, if you like astrology, and subscribe to the channel for many of my other astrology videos. And please comment if you know this person and if anything have I said makes sense, doesn't make sense. Love to hear from you and hope you have a great day.